fentanyl crisis, the phenomenon that in 2022 alone killed more Americans than this country lost in Vietnam, Afghanistan and Iraq combined, and it's now spreading to Europe. What makes fentanyl so attractive to drug users? What is the role of Chinese and Russians in producing it? How can we safely attend to overdose patients? And most important, do we as clinicians really have the knowledge to fight against the massive propaganda surrounding fentanyl? My name is Alex Hepner and this is Group Call. Medical textbooks will tell you that fentanyl is a synthetic opioid, a drug used to treat patients with severe acute pain or chronic pain, usually in the form of an injection or transdermal patch. What medical textbooks won't tell you is that illegal version of fentanyl can come in the form of powder, pills or patches and can be sold alone or in combination with other drugs. It is usually nicknamed China Girl, Dance Fever, Great Bear, Tango Cash, and a single dose costs from 5 to 20 US dollars. And you won't find in books how fentanyl suddenly became popular and appeared on the front pages of all the newspapers all around the world. To understand this, you must dig into the archives of the American Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The CDC reported that on October 23, 2002, at least 129 of the 800 hostages died in the Dubrovka Theater siege in Moscow, when Russian authorities subdued the hostage takers by pumping a mixture of anesthetic gas and carfentanil, a fentanyl derivative, into the building. That was the first documented use of fentanyl as a chemical warfare agent and is believed to be the beginning of this drug's leakage into the non-medical world. A couple years later, the first wave of the fentanyl tsunami began flowing from Russia to the USA. The second wave started around 2020 in China and brought fentanyl to the forefront when George Floyd was tragically killed during an arrest in Minneapolis, USA, leading to widespread protests. Mr. Floyd was found to have fentanyl in his body at the time of his death, and therefore the cause of death was initially linked to fentanyl intoxication. Now we know how illegal fentanyl became popular, but it's now time to find out why. There are three types of opioid receptors, mu, kappa, and delta. Fentanyl, like other opioids, binds predominantly to the mu receptor. The mu receptor is responsible primarily for decreasing the perception of pain, but also causes the release of dopamine, a neurotransmitter associated with pleasure and reward. This is how fentanyl, in addition to providing pain relief, produces feelings of euphoria and pleasure. While this effect is similar to that of other opioids, fentanyl is far more potent leading to much stronger sense of euphoria. This increased potency is a key factor to fentanyl's success. Together with its success came fake news and misinformation, often spread by politicians who are informally accused of being inspired by Russians. But also, internet has been flooded with testimonies from people who claim to have witnessed others collapsing simply from touching fentanyl. The most famous was a body cam recording in which police officer David Fireways supposedly touched fentanyl during an arrest and nearly died of respiratory depression. Experts believe that this collapse, as with dozens of others, was a psychological reaction to the stress associated with handling fentanyl. Another example of propaganda is the information about the dose, often illustrated with this picture. Don't get me wrong, the pictured proportions are accurate. However, while dosage is a significant concern, the real issue lies in the fact that fentanyl is highly lipid soluble, allowing it to rapidly cross the blood brain barrier. Look, the rapid onset of action and short duration of effect often lead individuals to administer additional doses more frequently to maintain this desired effect, contributing to a higher risk of addiction. The rapid cycle of relief and withdrawal can also quickly lead to overdose, respiratory depression, and potentially death. Speaking of withdrawal, there is another problem that is rarely mentioned in the media. Studies have shown that while the majority of drugs may cause withdrawal syndrome after prolonged use, fentanyl can induce withdrawal symptoms within hours of the last dose. Remember, withdrawal syndromes like 
tachycardia, hypertension, restlessness, and rapid changes in emotional states can be severe and potentially dangerous to both the individual and the public. If you are a paramedic, you know that the best option for any opioid overdose patient is naloxone administered intranasally, right? Right. But there is a caveat. Some recent studies have shown that MI root might be equally or even more effective than intranasal. Also, some devices used for intranasal naloxone administration have a dead space in them, which means that when you prepare the medicine, you need to draw up slightly more. Now, for example, this device requires uh, nearly 0.2 mils more naloxone, but please check the user's manual and consult your medical director before making any clinical decisions. And now, a top tip. When approaching an unconscious patient who is potentially intoxicated with fentanyl, kneel close to them and use your knee to pin the arm to the body to limit the movement. One of your hands should hover above the patient's arm for the same reason. You can administer naloxone with your free hand and later hover this hand over the head to avoid being headbutted. For more technical skills useful for paramedics like gaining uh, difficult IV access, please watch this video. My name is Alex Hepner and this was Group Call.